to Analysis Chat, a bi-weekly discussion with your lecturers for 220. I'm Dr. Biggs and I'm here with Dr. Kikiandi. Hello. And Dr. Le. Hello. I think we, we're getting closer to bi-weekly again. No, no, it was tri-weekly. That it's again last three it's weeks. It's three weeks. It's bi slash tri. Anyways, it doesn't matter. We're trying. We're, we're trying. trying. Yeah. So uh, we have another special guest this week, uh, Professor Angelov. Yeah, morning to you all. Professor Angelov is the head of the Department of Mathematics and Applied Mathematics. He is an expert in PDEs and dynamical systems and their applications in biological problems such as population dynamics and epidemiology. We'll have a chance uh, a little later to find out a bit more about this research. So, we are fast coming towards the end of the course. We have just a little bit more than two weeks before the semester ends. Yeah, so soon. It's kind of sad. Yeah. I've, I've been having fun. <laughs> <laughs> you scare me. <laughs> So where are we? Uh, we've really got an integration, yes. right? Mm -hmm. We've defined exactly what we mean by like the Riemann integral yeah. and started proving some basic properties. And yeah. we should at least get to the point where we can prove without yeah. a shadow of a doubt that continuous functions on closed intervals are integrable. Yeah. And we, we, uh, have, we had blasts from the past that is the supremum and infimum, right? Oh, yes. They came back. Wow. <laughs> All we the time. Won. We won. <laughs> <laughs> So, again, why integrals? Well, we, we kind of answered this in the last podcast. So uh, Yes, but we have a guess. Yeah, we, we might have a, a new, new perspective yes. <laughs> on why integrals. Well, thank you. <laughs> this is the question indeed. Why? <laughs> the questions of what and how students get it easily. Mm -hmm. But the question why is the question when you study integrals in 220. Yeah. And if I'm entering the course now, this is what I'll be asking. But sir, Dr. Biggs, why? <laughs> we studied integrals in the first semester, first year, and in the second semester of the first. And, la and now we are defining it actually only now. But don't we know what is integral? Why? Why are we doing it? And this is really the question that needs to uh, come uh, clearly. That 220 is the first place where you get glimpses as to how mathematics is uh, built. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a big difference between uh, riding a nice bicycle and uh, building a nice bicycle, so servicing a uh, nice uh, bar bicycle. Mm -hmm. So when you got into the nitty gritty of how mathematics is built, that is like building a bicycle or servicing your bicycles, and that is when you increase and things get messy and you have to figure what fits where but that is how the great bicycle is built and if you have in your cv you know i can ride a bicycle this doesn't really say much <laughs> but if you have in your cv i can actually service a bicycle i can uh, build it or mm. i can uh, mm. i know what is a bearing here yes <laughs> then this this might say something about about you uh, this is a beautiful metaphor yes <laughs> i like it yeah, yeah but for for the point now Instead of bicycle, you may say a smartphone. Oh, now students have smartphones. <laughs> yeah, yes. that is true. <laughs> but yeah. that's harder to pull. That is harder to pull. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's, ex it's exactly the same thing. Put in your CV, I can operate a smartphone. Wow. Yeah. wow. You're going to get so many job offers. Put on your CV, I, I can uh, make those yeah. apps. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. I can uh, disassemble and assemble a, a cell phone. I can bring my, build my cell phone from parts that I can order from uh, a producer there will be companies looking after you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But try with uh, being uh, to show that you're smart by uh, the fact that you can operate a smartphone. Mm. Won't yeah. work. No, I mean, yeah, yeah. that is the entire philosophy of this module, right? Yeah. Is really getting to the root of things so yeah. that we understand how to build things yeah. solidly and we can then extend them and do quite impressive things with them. It's not just a tool we know how to operate. We can actually build it and then make it bigger. Behind every user-friendly device or technology is a smart theory, is a hard theory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why the, the cell phones are smart, because of the sophisticated technology that is uh, behind them. That's why calculus is powerful, yeah. because of the concepts that were built in such sound way, yes. and which you started in the last section. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> so a small technicality, yes. right? Yeah. We define the integral for a bounded function yeah. using upper and lower sums. Yes. 
our textbook and we as lecturers, we call this the Riemann Riemann. integral. Yeah. This is a slight abuse. Yes. Right? Because actually it's, it's the Darbo yeah. integral. And for me, well, this is actually an interesting point in mathematics. Is often we name something mm -hmm. after somebody. And we kind of have this concept like, ooh, this genius <laughs> invented <laughs> all of integration. Yes, <laughs> all of integration. <laughs> Riemann, Riemann, he must have been. He just sorted everything with integration out. Yeah. He, he solved it all. And we are now learning from his clever work. Yeah. But that is quite far from reality. Yeah, yeah. Right? Of course, Riemann was not the only one playing around with integrals. No, no. Um, then the, the, so Darbu is, uh, I, I suppose, one of the people in the French School of Analysis. So yes. uh, his student, one of his students is uh, Emile Borel. Mm -hmm. And then one of Borel's students is Armin LeBay. Yes. So if we, well, we mentioned in passing when we talk about Dirichlet function in class. I don't know if you guys did this in your class. No. That the Dirichlet yeah. function is not integrable in Riemann sense, but yes. in another sense, yes. it is but integrable. But let's just remind ourselves, yeah. what is the Dirichlet function? <laughs> oh yes, uh, that the is the function that takes value 1 at irration that rational and 0 at irrational. Yes, yes, so that's not Riemann integrable. That's not Riemann integrable. Uh, I think it's actually a standard example in our text. Correct, yeah. But yeah. Um, w once you're doing a little sort of different integral, namely yes. Lebesgue integral, yeah. uh, this function is integrable in that sense. Yes. Yes. And, and well, yeah. we can maybe give a hint as to why. Yes. <laughs> right? The hint is because, in a sense, hmm. there are way more irrational numbers than there yeah. are rational numbers. Yes. Yeah. And in fact, if you carefully count it using the right definition, yes. building it carefully, right? Yeah. The irrationals actually don't count at all for making up the area. Hmm. Sorry, the rationals, the rationals don't count yeah, at all. Yeah. Only the irrationals yeah. count because there are so much more of them. Yeah. They have a they measure essentially the entire set, whereas the irrationals measure yes. tiny zero. Yes. Nothing yes. there. So um, this is basically the, the the main idea of measure theory. Yes. Which is what uh, the well, if you study Lebesgue integration theory, you have to start with measure theory. Yeah. And. Um, if you study measure theory, you'll hear these, these names, Borel, Lebesgue, yeah. uh, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, fun fact, actually, if you, go to, if, you, if you go online, there's this website called Mathematics Genealogy Project. Yes. Um, so if you type in, for example, Borel, and you can look at his students, and then you can look at his students' students, etc., yes. etc. I actually inherit my um, academic, uh, how you say, German family guy. tree. From yes. <laughs> from Hen from no from Borel and Lebay. But the German yeah. guy, right? They're, they're French. French. Yeah, okay. they're French. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, just a little bit of no, no. fun fact. <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but speaking of generalizing the integral, mm -hmm. for those students continuing to third year analysis, three ten. Oh yeah, there we encounter. Yeah, they will encounter another integral there. Yes, yeah. the Riemann Stieltjes. Yeah. Which is well somewhere in between. <laughs> is that how we we'll say? I think so. <laughs> how would you describe Riemann? Yeah, it's somewhere in between. Yeah, I think that's a good. <laughs> it's starting the process of yes. generalizing yes. to Lebesgue. Yes. 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 Yeah. So, so you're already in third year. Get some exposure to these ideas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So at first, somehow the, the main the main idea how to measure is a a distance. And then from that part, they, they iterate the parts up. And sometimes yeah. the function not good enough, so we can need no, another definition and it just keep going up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the main idea how to measure something we, we, we want to work on. So Riemann is the first guy, and when it not work, then we get another Lebesgue or something, and mm -hmm. then yes. generalize a bit. So we get a Zigma measurable, something like that, but later, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, too, it too much for now. Quite a few. <laughs> but I mean, this, this is good mathematics, yes. right? Yeah. We, we build a definition yeah. and we start building theory on that mm. definition and we can say a lot of nice things, mm. right? Yeah. With the Riemann integral, you can do a lot of nice things. Yeah. Yeah. But then you start asking s questions about some more funny objects. Yeah. Mm. And now suddenly your definition breaks down, mm. right? It's not going to satisfy that definition. I can't use these tools. Mm. Then you start asking the question, well, can I generalize my definition a little bit to cover this case, yeah. but still build a similar theory? Yeah. And of course, we do this several times with many areas in mathematics. Yeah. 
do this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I can say, the all the other integrals are generalizations of the in Riemann integral. Mm. Yes. And when we study further, mm. we should not forget about the Riemann integral. Yeah. yeah. yeah the so one. it's very often I find students in at honors level, they studied Lebesgue integral and. Uh, they kind of forget that it is uh, just a generalization of the Riemann integral. Mm -hmm. So if you tell them that the Riemann integral of this function is 1 and the Lebesgue integral of that function is 2, they are rightly to, uh, very likely to get it, you know, it's correct, okay, the, but the level, the Lebesgue integral should be <laughs> more correct because we are starting at the level. That's a good one. <laughs> so let's not forget, yes. for most of the practical applications yeah. uh, in life, for most yeah. of the modeling that is done with mathematics, Riemann integral is quite sufficient. Yes, yes. perfectly yeah. adequate. Yeah. So let's not forget that when we go to the Lebesgue integral, we're just extending it. So. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so we'll be finishing with uh, our integration quite soon. Yes. Polishing off the last few properties. Yes. And then we'll have one last theme to cover, and that is series, right? Yes. Yep. Now, in a way, series actually goes back a little bit to sequences. Yep. You can think about series just as, well, it's a kind of special Special sequence, kind of sequence, yes. But they are super special, and they come up all over the place, which is why, right, we have an entire theme dedicated to this special kind of sequences. Yes. Because now we can start building some theory yeah. for this special kind yeah. and see what we can do with that. Yeah. When we were talking about sequences, we talk about uh, Zeno's paradox. Aha. The, what was it? No, we, we, we changed it to you have a cake and then every day you eat half a cake yeah. and then you oh, eat yes. another half and then you yeah. eat another half. Yeah. You know, you'll never run out of cake. Oh, uh, <laughs> if you assume you can split atoms. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's another paradox of Zeno about uh, Achilles and the tortoise, right? And, and mm -hmm. this is actually, uh, I like the story because it is the, a basic idea of, of, of series, right? Yeah. Um, so the story goes, Achilles uh, is in a foot race, but the tortoise obviously not a fair race. So they say, okay, tortoise, you can go and have a head start. Let's say one meter whatever doesn't really matter one mm -hmm. kilometer a unit doesn't matter yeah and then um assuming that achilles runs faster than um than the tortoise let's say at some point achilles catch up with uh with the tortoise the tortoise already half a meter away right yeah. and then zeno said well if you do this all the time so every time let's say the tortoise progress another sorry the achilles progress another half the tortoise will progress another quarter. Yes. And when Achilles progressed the other quarter, and then the tortoise yeah. will progress another. You keep on halving the distance between the Yes, you keep halving the distance between them. And, then and therefore it will never reach. Yes, Achilles will never reach the tortoise. It's obviously wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> obviously not correct. But at that time, they could not explain this. They know yes. something is wrong, but they, the, the tools were not sophisticated enough. Yeah. But now we know because we know that. Just because you're adding infinitely many numbers, it doesn't mean that you can you always get infinity. Sometimes you get finite number. And this is actually the idea of convergent sequence, which sorry, yes. series, which yes, we're going to This is the heart of yeah, a convergent series. Yeah, which we're going to talk about, yeah. So yeah. Shall, shall we ask our usual question? Yes. Why series? Why series? <laughs> Should we start with our guest maybe? Well, <laughs> I must say it's uh, again. Again. <laughs> a very good question. Very good question. And as you can see from Zeno's paradox, infinity has bothered people for a long time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, series have bothered people uh, uh, for a long time. And, uh, well, there are some things that one can uh, consider obvious, like what is the sum of the all natural numbers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, one can say very easy. For we've got positive and negative. For every positive, we've got negative. So the sum of all natural numbers is zero. Am I right? All integers. integers. Of all integers. integers. Yes. yes. Sorry, not natural. Yes. Sorry. Of all integer numbers, yeah. positive and negative. They cancel the sum each is other out. Yeah, zero. <laughs> Absolutely. But then, why not? Why not? <laughs> if you start summing, one plus minus one, zero. Yeah. Plus two, minus two. Is two. Yeah. Then minus, minus two, two zero. Yeah. Zero. Then it is 3, yes, and then 0, 4, 0. The partial sum don't converge to nope. anything. And if you change the order of summation, then even weirder <laughs> things can yes. happen. 
<laughs> yes, that was. Uh, uh, yes, the other thing. Yes. Just start adding one and minus one. Mm. One plus minus one plus one plus minus one plus one plus minus one. You, the partial sum is either zero or one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you say, well, this sum kind of cannot make its mind. Is it zero or is it one? <laughs> is it zero or one? What What would you say? I yes. have no idea. Yeah. Well, many people will say half. Yes, you know, some people say half. The yeah. average, you know, yeah. Say the sum is uh, half. But then at the same time, you can say the answer is Wednesday. Yeah. Because yes. it's in the middle of the week, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> so, but the main thing <laughs> is that there are many series. Yes. Yeah. And there are very few of them that converge. Mm -hmm. So when one studies this uh, uh, section, one might get the idea that, oh, this series, they always converge. Why? Because we study the cases when they converge. Mm. Yeah. These are the interesting cases. Mm. These are the cases which uh, contribute to. Uh, getting some uh, some results yes mm. and this is the cases that we study mm. but there are many cases of series that do not converge yeah. and mm -hmm. then we should not just get the idea that well series uh, you know must uh, must converge no it's not at all mm. Mm -hmm. and this troubled many people and I just there was a documentary dangerous knowledge oh yes mm -hmm. on BBC one, yeah. mm. the first people who touched infinity yeah, yeah. They did not have. It was difficult concept. Yeah. Yes. And it starts with uh, your Cantor. Uh, yeah. Cantor. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and I would really suggest to uh, interested student just to Google the BBC documentary "Dangerous uh, Knowledge", Knowledge yeah. how to deal with infinity. Mm. Yeah. It bothered people since the time of uh, Zeno and until modern time. Mm. I, it still bothers people, right? <laughs> yes. And sometimes I, I almost ask myself, do we actually, can we say that we understand infinity? Or is it just a useful mathematical tool that we use? Mm. Yeah, the same for the com computer programs. You put the limit into that and it gives you infinity. So what infinity in the computer? So it's actually <laughs> finite. It's so small pack, but it's, mm. the answer is infinity. Mm. So how, how, how can we see it? Very good question. Do we understand it? And most likely that uh, if one says that they understand infinity, uh, they surely don't. <laughs> <laughs> sure sign of, of, not, no, of, not, knowing of not knowing is claiming that you know. Yes. <laughs> Well, the story is told about quantum mechanics, but I think pretty much it's yes. applicable yes. Uh, uh, to infinity yeah. Uh, yeah. as well. And the example which uh, uh, Dr. Lege gave is uh, very uh, uh, interesting. And it has been actually like that since ancient times. You count your ship, you've got one, two, three. Mm -hmm. You don't have a num name for the four, no, for four. So you say many. Mm. Yeah. Or you count to 100 and you say many. many. So mm -hmm. many has been the infinity. For the computer, now once you reach the largest number, mm. it gives you the inf sign. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I've reached infinity yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reaching infinity, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just, just okay. one part when I study series, I, I have a very stupid question. So I, I say, up to now we all study whatever we have a sub, like set, we have subset. Yeah. Sequence, we have subsequent. Why don't we have sub series? Sub series. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Go and write the theory. Prove to us some useful theorems and convince us this is a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's quite confusing for sure if yeah. we don't see it clearly. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, should we say something about some of the applications of series? Well, uh, our students will see it in uh, complex analysis, I think. Yeah. yeah. Or analytic functions. Um, yes. What well, else? I mean, in, in already, engineering. I mean, they, they crop up a lot of yeah. the places, yeah. right? Even, they've already seen geometric series. Yes. And, I mean, there are places that you want to calculate that. If you want to work out how far does Achilles need to run to catch up with the tortoise, yeah. The answer is calculate that geometric series, yes. right? So those kinds of problems are best approached using this language. Yeah. For me, the, the other exciting thing is um, tying up with Taylor polynomials, yeah. right? Yeah. Because that, in a way, is a series. 
once you fix the x values, you have a series that mm. you calculate, and yeah. you're approximating your function Using with that yeah. infinite Using polynomial. Mm. And this becomes big business when oh, you yes. say, well, let's restrict our discussion to only those functions that can be written that way, that mm. can be approximated using a Taylor expansion. Mm. And there's beautiful theory there. Yeah. For touch here, right? Uh, complex analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Taylor theory and. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, I'm thinking of analytic functions yeah. and yeah. analytic yeah. manifolds. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, approximations. Yeah. 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 Let's not forget that that is where most of those theories started from. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The series for uh, calculating the value of pi. Yeah. Mm. It is uh, still probably the best way of calculating the. Uh, the, the value of pi. Mm. But in many practical problems, the only thing that uh, you can get is a series solution. You mm -hmm. can have it as large as you want, but then it will be finite. So, and unless you've got a sound theory behind to uh, show which shows convergence uh, and possibly an estimate, then uh, your approximation with the final sum is pretty much uh, meaningless. Mm. So that's why the theory of uh, convergent uh, uh, series is actually very important and yeah. Yeah. in many fields. Mm. I'll mm. put approximation yes. in one of the uh, top uh, bullets. Mm. Mm. I feel like I keep on saying this, but it's, it's yet another basic mathematical object, yes. right? That we do so much other mathematics using this idea. Yes. So it's again going back to why functions well, because it's a really useful idea. Yeah. We can do so many things with it. Yep, yep. Hmm. We'll cover some basic ideas yes. of series, right? Give a good definition yep. as usual, check a few series, what kind of series converge, what diverge. I think specifically we'll show that the harmonic series diverges. Yes. Yeah. Right, if you sum one over i for all i, mm -hmm. that diverges. Mm -hmm. But quite nicely, if you make it one over i squared, converges. Huh? Converges. <laughs> Why? Why? We'll, well hopefully, we'll get, we'll get far to enough it. along to do yeah. some series tests. Yeah. And get a little bit deeper into exactly why does that happen. Mm. So that's then where we will probably end our course is after we've yeah. done a few basic series tests to try and tell, well, if a given series converges or diverges. Yeah. Anything else exciting happened in lectures or tutorials? Uh, I think that means nothing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, the only thing that when we give definition of uh, uniformly continuous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... I, I'm not there yet. Oh, not there yeah. yet. Okay. Uh -huh. So I, I just see that uh, our students still struggle to prove a function is continuous at a point. And now I have to <laughs> uniformly. So I just gave an example that if we have a curve yes. and it's uniform continuous, it means whenever you, you get an epsilon, it means you create a, a pi and you put through that curve and you yeah. want to make that run yes. around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Run along yeah, the yeah, uh, Along the, that the one. Curve, yeah. If it is stuck somewhere and you have to chop the pi to get it smaller, it means the delta uh -huh. has to be smaller. You keep chopping until you get that pi get through the, the curve. Mm -hmm. And if you couldn't chop it to make it get through, it's made it not uniform. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, is, that is nice it's explanation. A, it's a nice visualization. Yeah. 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 Nice explanation. Okay. okay. Well, Professor uh, Angelov, thanks for joining us. But uh, before we finish, we'd love to hear a little bit about your research and what, what exciting things you study. Well, as, um, it was uh, said earlier, my research, my contemporary research is mostly in uh, on dynamical systems uh, defined by ODEs or reaction diffusion uh, PDEs and they apply to various areas of uh, biology and uh, chemistry. It's quite mm -hmm. fascinating how many um, real life phenomena can be represented through uh, mathematical tools. Yes. <laughs> The zebra, the patterns on the uh, zebra skin, mm -hmm. the uh, behavior of uh, populations where they try to optimize uh, the survival, the survival level, and questions regarding epidemiology, what percentage of the population you need to uh, vaccinate against a certain uh, virus to guarantee that there, there will be no um, uh, outbreak. So these are the 
fascinating for, for me as a mathematician that one can uh, give answer to this uh, question questions using hardcore mathematics. Yeah. But I am a mathematician. So what mm -hmm. I do is uh, mathematics. And to a large extent, what I do can be described as applied analysis. Mm -hmm. So this is just to stress how important is this uh, analysis uh, background for anyone who does uh, uh, mathematics, further mathematics and mathematics applications. Mm -hmm. So sometimes uh, pure mathematicians, like uh, probably all of those that are around me, <laughs> <now, laughs> I have problems with this distinction between <laughs> pure and applied, but go on. <laughs> Tend to look down on applied, uh, on applied mathematicians, yes. because uh, you know the one group makes mathematics, the other group just applies. <laughs> so, as you can hear from Dr. Biggs, you know he disagrees with it, and I disagree with this yes. uh, too. There hasn't been a single practical problem which I have attempted that didn't require any new mathematics. Exactly. Mm. And if I was not, if I not had the proper mathematical uh, background, I wouldn't have made any contribution to the problem or any contribution to uh, mathematics. Yes. yes. So that is how uh, this uh, this is the driving force behind uh, the development of new mathematics, in my view. Of mm -hmm. course, very often people say, what if type of question, and then discover new theory. But it is, uh, if one looks at uh, history, uh, the driving force behind the development of uh, many mathematical theories is actually meaningful applications. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say, coming back to analysis, yeah. most of the spaces in the engine behind the development of the physics, most spaces yeah. in analysis is mm -hmm. mathematical physics, yeah. Yeah. which is just another way for partial differential, for partial differential uh, equations. Mm. I mean, a good example perhaps is Newton. Yeah. You would argue he was doing applied stuff, Yes. but he was an important driving force in introducing in calculus. calculus. Yes, so that's why when people define themselves uh, as pure mathematicians or, the or blind mathematicians, I always have a question in my mind. Are they actually good mathematicians? Yeah. I mean, for me, it's, it's more a descriptor of, of what drives your interest yes. rather than what is the I mathematics yeah. you're doing. Yeah, I think that's, right? a, that's, that's a fair comment, yeah. Because if, if, if you really analyze the word applied mathematics, you are applying mathematics. Yes. So you should know mathematics, right? Yeah. So you should be a mathematician. Yes. So therefore, I don't see the distinction between pure but and applied yeah. mathematics. It's just your interest, exactly. whether you were, you're interested in developing the theory or in your uh, driving force, so to say, in your, in your research is something from biology, maybe. Yes. Or, or and it's, it's and often just a matter yeah. of, of how you're looking at yeah. the same stuff. Yeah. I, some of the stuff I've done, People have said, whoa, that is super applied. Super applied. And then I talk to somebody else and they say, wow, that, that is super, super pure. And it's exactly the same stuff. It's just <laughs> they're looking at it in a different way. Different glasses. <laughs> and different time, they define a different kind of pure matter applied matter. Yeah. 100 years ago, yes. pure matter, totally different. Yes, that's true. Um, and now we're too old to change it. Our students got to change it. If they want to prove it, apply or pure, they have to change that idea, not us yeah. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we're too old now. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's about it for this episode of Analysis Chat. Mm -hmm. yep. Thanks again for joining us, Professor Angular. Always thank wonderful. You for you. Thank you for having me here. It was great. It was a great pleasure. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so <laughs> until next time. Cheers. Bye. 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 Ciao.